Well, I did a search for places to go, and I saw something about a history of computers museum. Now, I've seen a lot of these things, usually a small little one room. You know, it's got a couple of computers in there, so I figured I'd go check it out, and it would be something like that. Yeah, I was wrong. This is a big place. Let's go explore. So, yeah, this place is definitely not some little basement uh, computer place. It is a full-on museum, and it looks pretty incredible. And I'm going to have to go check this whole thing out. Punch cards, you remember them. Well, I remember them. Yeah, I'm that old. They were uh, real fun. You had to sit down on a machine like this, and you had to type them up. And if you were doing your program and somebody got them out of order or dropped them, <laughs> no fun. The, the real computer origination of them came around the 1800s for the census. A man by the name of Hollerith came up with the idea that he could make these cards and they could have different areas to be punched for male, female, teacher, doctor, lawyer, etc. And it would be easier for people to... Um, calculate all the answers. So this was the first key punching machine used for those kind of cards. So somebody would sit down with that and manually enter the data based on the different parameters by the census. Then this machine would be used to tabulate the answers. They would take it and they would place the punch card in here and that pool in the bottom actually had mercury in it so these points would go through the card and register and then each one of these would increment accordingly. And that was the first use of the punch cards. The early equations were done in analog utilizing a differential engine which meant that they had something like this and they would actually plot it out with an XY plotter and all the calculations were done by comparing different analog values. Now this is circa 1956 so you can see how far we've come in just a very short period of time. Now if you think computers are a recent thing they've been around for about 2,000 years The Univac. Yeah, crazy. <laughs> and this is 1951's technology. Here's something I wasn't expecting to see here. This was the German Enigma machine. It was a major breakthrough when they figured out how to crack the codes on this thing. What would happen is every day they would replug these wires in so every day they had a different message format so if you managed to crack the message by the next day it was useless tell me if this doesn't look like every sci-fi movie you've ever seen Now this is out of the Minuteman guided missile. All right, this is the computer section for it. Now just bear in mind, <laughs> all of these parts, all of this stuff was used once, and then it blew up. Can you imagine how long it took to wire all of that? So okay, here's a blast from my past. When I worked on the F-15s, the disk drives that we used to store the data, that was them. 256K of memory. Yeah. And that was for the test equipment for the F-15. So you can see we've come a long way in a very short period of time. Can you imagine? I mean, 256K? Jeez.
five, ten, three. It's one of about a thousand of them were made uh, as a as a product by IBM and, and, and released about, well, announced in about fifty six and really released in about nineteen fifty eight. I like and, uh, it was developed between fifty two and fifty six in downtown. And this is before the bite. This is five million characters. Yes, characters and not bytes. Yeah. Yeah. The bite wasn't yeah. Until the yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, but the, they were the kind of characters that were on punch cards, the same kind that were on a tape on a Unibex. Right. Right. And right. So there was a start bit, six bits of data, and a parity. Well, they were close to a bite. Oh well, yeah. They were, and they the were eight bits. <laughs> Some people will argue that you could use, that, that it's much less than than five uh, megabytes. And I would say not really because if you have stuff that's on punch cards, five million punch card characters, you would have to use a five right, 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 store them because you won't really uh, rearrange the data normally. It's, it's in theory possible. But, yeah. But, Growing up, the most impressive computer I could ever see would have been the Cray One. I mean, in its day, it was the fastest for five years. Each one was hand wired, took about a year to make, and these things had 32 megabytes of memory in them. Their top speed was 160 megaflops. That's it. Right now, I've got a phone that does more than that. Just amazing. It boggles my mind how far we've come in just a short time. 1961. That was considered state of the art. State of the art. <laughs> Had one of those. <laughs> oh, when I was a kid, I wanted one of those. <laughs> Now I can build one. This is you might you might be wondering why is that in a computer museum? But if you're a real graphic hound, you're going to know why. Oh yeah. That is the Utah teapot. It started it started off right as that original wire structure that you saw right there. You know what I mean? But then What's that? right what happened was they didn't just stop there. Right then they started trying to make things more realistic, so they started putting textures on. Yeah, yeah. And I think that Yeah, that see right there? That yeah. that that, that one that just flashed? That's what I was doing on the Atari ST. Nice. That's the resolution that we had. That that, that one that went and it was like kind of Yeah. Yeah. We couldn't do the we couldn't do the smoothing, but that was it. And like we were discussing just a minute ago, if, if you ever see any kind of Pixar film or Disney film, look in there because the animators always hide that in there somewhere. Oh, yeah. Always. These are the uh, human input devices. Had it. Had it. <laughs> Had it. Had it. It's weird, dude, when you go to a museum and you realize you've actually had some of those things. <laughs> I see something. Now, some of you guys, I told the story about building the H8 and the H11. There you go. That's one of the ones that I built. That was like the first computer I ever built slash used. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I started on at home. Had the first one in my town. And then I got the expansion interface and the two floppy drives for it. And at the time, I used to go to the store and just go uh, crazy looking at this thing. 
Yeah, I originally wanted an apple. Imagine that. I've also got a pretty good... Um, communication section. 